Welcome to Facts. And Flannels. Just two man friends talking about facts. What was I supposed to say? <laughs> All right, we're gonna... Welcome to Facts. And Flannels. Just two man friends talking about weird facts. And wearing flannels. My name is Ryan. And my name's Doug. Let's get going. All right. The, let's, see, let's start off with a big bang of things, right? So I don't know if you remember this year. We are supposed to be a very momentous occasion because the Olympics were going to happen this year. And so I decided it's because I love sports and I like history a lot. I figured we'd look back at some of the weird things that have happened in the history of the Olympics, if you'll indulge okay. me. You know, these are going to be a little bit of quick things, but they're also really fun to things. So first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the, uh, the Swedish team in the pentathlon of 1968. Now, I don't know if you know what the pentathlon is. It's basically it's the five events that are designed to see your hunter gatherer type skill and all that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Um, Hans Gunnar Lijenwald. Lijenwald? I don't know how you say it. It's Swedish. Um, he was disqualified from the competition because he tested positive for drugs during the 1968, which is a shame. <clears throat> And the real, so, you know, and he, you know, he was going to dispute it, but he actually admitted to doing it. And he admitted that, you know, he should be in the wrong. and He was disqualified. Since we're banned. The drug that he, uh, well, let me tell you about, he was banned after finding out after the, the gun shooting competition. So they have a gun shooting competition. He, they, after that competition, he was found to be uh, on drugs and they were disqualified him after that. Uh, he told, when asked about it, yeah, what drugs, you're asking what drugs you're going to take? What, yeah. Uh, he allegedly, and he confirms that he had drank two beers before the competition. Yeah, okay, drugs, yeah, sure. Yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah, because that's who you want. Shooting a gun in the Olympics is a guy drinking beers before he's like, I just want to steady my nerves, I need a couple drinks. So he drank beers and then was since banned. He was the first ban of an athlete for alcohol in the Olympics. So there's just a fun little fact. Okay. That's a fun fact. Uh, you play basketball too, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. So so basketball, I'll tell you about basketball in the Olympics. Basketball made its debut in 1936. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what Olympics happened in 1936? No. They were the Berlin Olympics. Oh. So, you know, this is a highlight of like showing the, uh, you know, Olympics. That was also when World War II was just starting up and yeah. then when the Third yeah. Reich came to power. So the Third Reich didn't really plan on basketball as like a big event. Okay. So they failed to secure any means of playing indoors. <laughs> so the basketball courts they played on were on clay and sand converted tennis courts. Now, I don't know if you've ever imagined what the weather is like in Germany at all. I don't know if you've ever been to Germany. Uh, it rains. And it got washed away. It, it washed away and became a giant mud pit, basically. Um, it's quite ideal for that. The gold medal game actually coincided with a thunderstorm. Oh. So they played right after a thunderstorm happened. Who won? Um, and they were prepared for this, and since we're the first gold medal game won by the U.S. over Canada. 19 to 8. So, so, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you lost one of the most boring games probably in history. <laughs> Can you imagine watching a full basketball game that went to 19 to 8? <laughs> I wonder if the scoring was different back then, though, too. You know, like, I mean, even if it was like just a point, like one point every basket. Get hope. That sounds even, That would still be ex extremely boring. So if you think about it, in today, if, if it was a two pointer, you had 19 shots or 19 made shots, you're only looking at 38 points. Yeah. It's 38 to 16. So that, <laughs> it's just equally as bad. Yeah. The NBA finals just ended this past week, and I think it was like 104 to 96 was the final score. 
Yeah. And the white guy. Just now, like now he, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say mm-hmm. that maybe they only played a few minutes because of the thunderstorm. You'd hope. You know, I, I have to hope. I mean, it's just but like. That's hysterical, though. But try to, can you imagine trying to dribble basketball on sand, never mind on wet mud? You can't no, do that. I mean, just in wet pavement sucks. <laughs> how do you, how do you, how, how does an Olympic country not say, hey, we should get some more inside play? I mean, is that really a question for the time period, though? And it's also 1936 Germany. And, uh, yeah. They may have had some other things to fry. Yeah, I feel like there's other things on that. Probably yeah, a little bit different. That's okay because 1952 brought the second coming of the best basketball in the Olympics you've ever seen. These were in Helsinki, and they basically they've evolved. They now know how to play inside and everything, uh, but they were able to get more teams. And the Uruguayan team, so the team from Uruguay, okay. came there and they won the bronze medal. Basketball powerhouse Uruguay. However, um, they were not the, um, how do I say, most polite of any team to play in the Olympics ever. Uh, in their game against France, they fouled so many players, they had to finish the game with three players on the court. <laughs> including okay. on their bench, they just had so many people fouled out, they just had three players to play the game. That's fun. Um, here's, here's they, a, while, while you're on that particular subject when I was in oh god it was probably eighth grade no it wasn't eighth grade it was seventh grade when I was in seventh grade my basketball team made it into the playoffs and we won our first playoff game we made it into the semifinals the semifinal game we played against a team that we had lost to uh, during the regular season and they were good. Like they had this one player that was just like amazing. And we, we had something very similar in the semifinals game. We only had seven players and um, three of them fouled out before the end of the game. Now, what the issue is, is that you have to have five players on the field, on the court at all times. So we had three fell out, which only left us with four. And one of those four was getting like a severe Charlie horse in his leg. Oh, no. So, like, he was on the floor just like screaming in pain. And um, we had to take like some time to let him like recover. And then the other team actually allowed us to continue playing. Like, we all agreed that, like, yeah, we could keep playing with four players. Um, and it'll still, like, be legit, like a legit game. So they let us do that, and the refs were fine with it, and, like, the association was fine with it. So we continued playing, and we ended up beating them with four play- with only four players. <laughs> and we made it into the finals. Now, the finals, we played against a team that we had lost to by 19 points in the regular season because they were another real good team. We were, like, the third seat. I think the whole time. And uh, we ended up beating them in the champion in the championship game by 19 points. So it was just like, we just had this stretch of just incredible moments. That's it. That's, that's pretty great. Basketball career was in seventh grade. Seventh grade. <laughs> I love your basketball career. I, think I had like 14 points that game. That was like the most points I've ever scored in a game. But I, that's not to say that I'm bad because I'm not. And don't don't admit to the YouTube world you're bad. I was just the, the way that I play. I was I'm very much like I saw things very well. So I had a ton of assists and I had a ton of rebounds and you're real John Stockton over here. That kind of stuff. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't like the big scorer, but I was a big like ball movement type of person. And then after my senior year, and I went into college, and I ended up coaching a little bit of the team that I, like, (laughs) some of the kids that I played with the year previous, I ended up coaching them a little bit. And uh, that was, like, the big thing that I would focus on as the assistant coach is, like, working on ball movement and stuff like that. So, All all the exciting things of basketball in the world, be it passing, 
<laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's fundamentally the most important part of the game. Fundamentally, yes. Ball Let's movement, go. Ball movement is, is fundamentally the most important part of the game. You don't need to even make that many shots if you can keep the ball moving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Clearly so not. The U.S. won 19 to 8. So you they won 19 to 8, moving. so why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> or, oh, so, yeah. So, anyway, but yeah, so that was the last thing I was going to say. So, with your why, by the way, so they lost to France that game, clearly, with three players, and you know, you're going to lose. You know, uh, when France scored the game winning layup, they, Uruguayans, uh, graciously accepted that defeat by then attacking the referee who called so many fouls on them and beat him up and then proceeded to constantly kick him in the groin. <laughs> Only in the Olympics do you have this kind of sportsmanship. That is not nice. <laughs> uh, following, day, <laughs> following day, they played the Soviet team. Uh, they sent three Soviet players to the first aid station because they hurt them so badly with fouls. And then in the bronze medal game against Argentina, they decided to just go all out and started a 25-person melee on the court. Wow. That's how you win the bronze medal at the Helsinki Olympics in basketball. Now, have they ever played basketball, Olympic basketball ever again? <laughs> <laughs> One would hope they'd be like, you know what, listen, we're going to take a break from you being in the Olympics and, like, stop. Just stop playing. <laughs> like, when were the etiquette lines drawn? Was <laughs> it before or after? You're an Olympic athlete. Have some decency and stop kicking the referee in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, but basketball still to this day in the Olympics 